The overall purpose of the lab is to find out what causes Parkinson's disease. Uh, we're particularly interested in environmental factors since most of Parkinson's does not appear to be genetic. So we know that pesticides in general increase the risk and one of the things that we've been doing is figuring out which pesticides uh, increase the risk and how they do it on a molecular level. Every person who gets Parkinson's gets it probably for a little bit different reason. So what we're trying to do is figure out as many of those contributors of risk to get Parkinson's for each individual and then we'll be able to target therapy for them. So there are two major aspects of how we approach this problem. One are population studies and we've established a large cohort in the Central Valley of California where we have over 800 uh, patients that we're following. So we're looking at uh, things in the environment that are associated. But once they're associated, we don't know if that actually causes it or not. So we'll expose animals to it and see, does it recapitulate some of the aspects of Parkinson's disease? And the animal model that we like to use are zebrafish. They're all genetically modified for different reasons. So we can put a, uh, a mutation in that causes Parkinson's in people. Most often we actually put in uh, we call reporter genes, they're fluorescent proteins. And so what they do is a uh, uh, report on how a certain process goes. For example, alpha synuclein is a protein that builds up and it underlines the cause of Parkinson's. We can make it green, fluorescent green, and we can follow what happens to it throughout its whole process from being made to being broken down and degraded. One of the things I like to do is have the everybody in my lab, the PhDs in my lab, meet patients on, to remember why we're doing this. Uh, so it really motivates us to actually help people. And I envision when I'm seeing a patient, you know, obviously you get very attached and emotionally involved with them, but I also can see in my mind molecularly what's kind of going on with them and really can approach them in not just a humanistic way, but a scientific way as well.